Hello, welcome to everyone in this video. This is our lecture number seven. Uh, in this lecture series, actually, we discuss the solution of the classical mechanics problem, which asks in this book that is the mechanics and properties of matter. This is the part seven of this book. In this lecture, we want to discuss question number twenty-eight to thirty-four of chapter two, which is mechanics of a particle. If you wants to watch previous lecture, you can get uh, go to the description box. Link are given there. Also, there in this channel, there are various physics related theoretical and problem solution part available in different playlist. You can go through the description box. Links are given there. So let's start today discussion. First question twenty eight says the trajectory of the particle is this. So this is the trajectory of a particle where A B C are constant. Calculate the angular momentum of the particle about the origin so that it also the constant along R. So This angular momentum is R cross P, and P is the m b. Since this is a unit mass, so m is one. So this is m cross v, and v is nothing but dr dt. If you derivative these things, you will be get this one, and then cross product you will be get this one. Now this will be uh, also constant along k cap, but I don't know why this is k cap. So this is the angular momentum. Next one. Next question says a particle of mass m rest on the top of smooth sphere. It is displaced slightly so that it bring to slide. So it is displaced like, like here. This is a sphere on top. This is the initial position and this slides like here. Okay. So that velocity of particle at the point when it leaves the sphere is this. So when it leaves to the sphere is velocity will be like that. So when the leaves the reaction force must be zero because there is no contact there is no contact means the, the the reaction force is zero so this force is mg component that is mg cos theta that's along that direction along that direction along that direction that is mg cos theta and uh, along that direction mg sin theta So mg cos theta must be equal to centripetal force that is m v square by a. So cos theta equal to v square by a g. Now consider the energy conservation. These two point. This is point a. Suppose this is point initial point a. Ah, uh, this is initial point. Suppose this is initial point a and this is point b. So the energy at point a and b must be equal. So at 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 point A the kinetic energy is zero and potential energy. If you take this B point as a reference, so potential energy M G and this gap, right? So what will be the gap? This is A. So this must be A cos theta. I I want to draw these things here. You can see this is like this is A, this is B, this is total A, and this also total A. So if this angle is theta, so this portion will be A. cos theta so this only a minus a cos theta clear so that's why this is a minus a cos theta that's why this is a minus a cos theta okay so mg h this is the separation between these two a vertical separation between point a and b so this is the potential energy and kinetic energy is zero because initially the velocity is zero The uh, energy at point B, the potential is zero because we take this as reference. So potential is zero and kinetic energy half m square. From here we will be get the v square is equal to like that. And cos theta obtained from here. If you put this two, we will be get this equation. Finally, you get the value of velocity at the point where this is displaced from the sphere will be like that. I think clear. Go to the next one. Next question say a particle of mass a moves along a trajectory this so this is the trajectory x and y find x and y component of force of particle then potential and the kinetic energy of the particle okay so the position can be written as r vector equal to i cap x plus j cap y so x is x zero cos omega one t and y zero sine omega two t so the velocity is nothing but dr dt if you derivative with respect to time you will be get this one and that one. So the acceleration equals to dv dt. So if you derivative with respect to time, will be get sine and cos and cos and sine. And this is nothing but x and this is nothing but y. So this will be the acceleration. So the force will be mass into acceleration. 
so just putting this value of mass will be get this one so this is the x component and this is the y component of the force next the potential energy potential energy is nothing but the work done so force into displacement this is the force and displacement multiply these two things and integrating will be get this one kinetic energy half m v square square of this v will be like that so total energy is the summation of these two things you will be get these things which is constant with respect to time next question an insect move along a diameter of revolving round table which is rotating at a uniform rate of p radius per second so this is the uh, revolving round table uh, this is a round table which is, is revolving mm, uh, uh, it, it this is a uh, p is the angular velocity that is the uniform rate per second assuming that the insect has a constant velocity v relative to the table and find the acceleration of the pass through this uh, passing through the center so uh, for the so solving this question you need to know about the coriolis force and the centripetal force actually coriolis force uh, arises during the uh, non inertia frame what is non inertia frame since this frame is uh, moving this is rotating that means this is a non inertia frame because its uh, velocity is not uniform or it is not in rest so this is a non inertia frame that's why there arises coriolis force and the centripetal force centrifugal force coriolis force is minus 2m this uh, ang uh, angular speed and the linear speed cross product of angular speed and linear speed at the center this can be uh, taken as this is along z direction so this is p k cap and along that direction if we take this is a, a, a i cap so this will be minus i cap so this will be 2 mp j cap and centrifugal force at the center will be m p square r and since r is zero because at the center the distance from the center is zero that's why this is zero so if you uh, equating these two things you easily find out this mass into acceleration equal to only this thing because the centrifugal force is zero so the acceleration will be 2 pm sorry 2 pb next question <coughs> next question says a particle travel uh, on a path of a spiral so this particle moving on this path this path described at this equation r equals to 2 e to the power minus 0 0.35 meter such that phi dot that is d phi dt is a constant whose value is 1.5 radian per second find the velocity and acceleration of the particle at phi equal to 210 degree okay so for that you need to know about the expression for the velocity in plane polar coordinate system this is the velocity in plane polar coordinate system that is dr dt er cap that is the direction of r vector and this is the unit vector uh, uh, along the phi vector this is the unit vector along the phi vector so dr dt is nothing but if you take the r r so dr dt taking the derivative you will be get these things at uh, phi equals to 210 degree centigrade that is 7 by 6 pi in terms of pi so if you put this thing you will be get dr dt is 0 0.3 and d phi dt that is phi dot was given 1.5 so you will be get these things clear and the acceleration can be find out acceleration can be find out this is the expression for the acceleration of a plane polar coordinate system in a plane polar coordinate system the acceleration is given like that so this is the along uh, r vector and this is the along phi vector so if you put this r is like that r dot is already after in the previous slide so r double dot is nothing but derivative of this thing a derivative of this r dot so taking this derivative of that uh, okay so phi double dot this part will be zero only this part will become uh, contributed if you put this value you can easily find out this value okay so this is the r double dot r phi dot phi dot is 1.5 and r is often here like that and r phi double dot is zero phi double dot is zero because phi dot is constant so phi double dot is zero and two this is value of r dot and this is phi dot so after putting this value you will be get this thing okay i think clear if there is any doubt you must comment in the comment box go to the next one next question says if x and y as the components of the phase forces 
acting in a two dimension on a particle of unit mass so mass is our unit then the newton's law of equation can be written as like that so for unit mass the mass into acceleration mass is unit so this is acceleration this can be written as vx dv dx because acceleration can be written as like a, you can just change i think you can change these things d2x dt square is nothing but ddt of dx dt and this can be written as ddx and this is nothing but v this is nothing but vx suppose it is and this can be dx dt this is v vx so dvx dx into vx okay so this can be written as like one no problem and this is as a x this is as a x okay the term and d2 y dt square also written as y so if you take d2 y dx square if you take d2 y dx square this can be changed into like that dy dt and dx dt so this is vy and this is vx if you derivative these things you will be get that one and rearranging them you will be get this one so after that you will be get vx square equal to like that this is the vx square so this is vx square so if you take derivative of these things you will be get 2vx raised that is 2x so this is and derivative of these things must be equal so their separation is zero simple next question <coughs> prove that prove that this vector force this is the force vector is a conservative force field prove that this is a conservative force field find the corresponding scalar potential function v and the um, uh, work done in moving object is like that from that point to that point so for conserve uh, for prove the conservative of a force the curl of this force must force must be zero so if you take this curl of this force you will be get zero so this is conservative and the potential can be find out because f is minus grad v so if you equating these two things you will be get the uh, this force and this grad v grad v is my, uh, uh, i cap del v del x plus j cap del v del y plus k cap del v del y if you compare this i cap j cap k cap finally you will be get the value of v in terms of three partial integration so uh, in, in total this well this uh, potential function will be like that and the work done is nothing but the uh, f dot dr and f is grad v so this separation of the potential is the work done so, so the potential 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 at these two point that is a point and b point if you take this a point and b band b point so the separation of their potential is the work done so the work done will be 2 0 2 unit so i think clear about all this if there is any doubt you must comment in the comment box this is all about me and this is my contact detail you can connect with me with this telegram channel and this is my online platform and this is my YouTube channel details physics by Lashmi Kanta sir. If you want, you can go through this YouTube channel. You will be get different physics related video uh, with some theoretical part and some problem solution. Like this session, if you learn something from this session, share this video. Your friends, either he or she also get benefit from this video. Subscribe this channel. If you need this channel, those already subscribed. Thanks for subscription. Press the bell icon to get notification of upcoming videos. So take care. We'll meet in the next video. As soon as possible. Thank you.